Welcome to the seventh section of this course, which is Tensor Board for Monitoring and Debugging in TensorFlow. Now let's look at what we are going to cover in this particular section. We will start with an introduction to Tensor Board, understanding what is Tensor Board and how it is different from any other particular debugging and how it is different in debugging from any other languages. Then we will learn about some unique and important features of TensorBoard like name, name scope and summary which makes it easier to understand our model and visualize it using TensorBoard. Then we will dive into different views or dashboards of TensorBoard like scalars, graphs, distributions, histograms etc. Then in the last we will understand how to launch a TensorBoard and then how to do a monitoring and debugging in a particular neural network. We will do a practical example of that using TensorBoard. So let's start with introduction to TensorBoard. So why is TensorFlow different and why is debugging in TensorFlow different? So first we will see how debugging is different in TensorFlow. We know and we have seen in previous sections that TensorFlow provides unique set of features and it creates and populates what is called a computation graph in which we define tensors and operations and link them together. This graph is run in a separate environment on CPU or GPU specifically designed for this graph. This poses some unique challenges in trying to understand what the code is doing. In machine learning, it is little different and often very unpredictable. The large amount of data, its quality, along with the complex models having numerous layers and various parameters, all these make debugging very difficult in machine learning. And all these factors have a great influence on the success or failure of the training process. That's when TensorBoard comes into picture. TensorFlow luckily has got a solution for this problem which is called TensorBoard, which is a TensorFlow's built-in visualizer through which you can visualize your TensorFlow graph, plot variables about the execution and show additional data like images etc. So as you can see here in this particular slide, I have just shown a snapshot of how the TensorBoard looks like. We will go into the detail about each and every view or dashboard in this upcoming video, but this is just a snapshot of how TensorBoard looks like. As you can see on the top here, this orange bar, it shows all the types or views of dashboards which are available in TensorBoard, scalars, images, graphs, then we have distributions, histograms, images, text, which we'll see in our further sections. This is how in the scalars we see actually the accuracy. So we see the graph over here. This is basically the high level snapshot of how a TensorBoard looks like. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there are several features and tools in TensorFlow which help in debugging and monitoring and basically understanding the TensorFlow graphs in a much better and easier way. They are name, name scope and summary. Let's look into a little bit of detail of what they are. So first property is name, which is added in many elements in the computation graph to identify them easily and visualize them in the tensor board. So tf.name is used to add the name to any element. This helps us to identify any elements very quickly. And that particular name is also displayed on the tensor board. So we can identify and relate any element with its name. So that is why it is very useful when we are doing the visualization on tensor board. The second property is name scope. This name scope property is basically grouping of elements into one so as to differentiate it with other group of elements. So for example, we have say con1 name scope, which will have all elements of the first convolution layer. Similarly, we can have name scope, which will have all the elements of the second convolution layer. So this basically name scope element, it helps us differentiate one group of elements from the other group of elements. So this is used or this is done with the help of tf.name underscore underscore scope property, which is used to group scalars on the board and it displays the same way on the tensor board. The third property is summary property. This property is nothing but a class in TensorFlow having different methods to write various summaries to log files like image summary, text summary, audio summary, etc. TensorBoard use these log files to visualize the computation graph and training process which makes it easier to monitor and optimize TensorFlow training programs. So tf.summary is used as an object to display anything on the TensorBoard and it can be used like tf.summary.scalar objects, tf underscore loss underscore summary, tf underscore accuracy underscore summary. So this is a very important class which has various methods to display different kinds of properties or different displays on the tensor board. Let's have a view or let's have an understanding of what are the different views and dashboards of tensor board. 
So on a high level, these are the different views or dashboards of TensorBoard. We have scalars, graph, distributions, histograms, image, audio, and text. So now what we will do is we will have a look into each one of this dashboard or view in detail. So the first one is scalars. What it does is it visualizes the scalar values like classification accuracy. So mainly this one is used to display the classification accuracy on the tensor board. We have methods in the summary class so that we can display the scalars as well on the tensor board. The second one is graphs. It is also a very important view and is generally used in TensorBoard. It visualizes the computational graph of your model, such as the neural network model. So whatever computation graph we have built in our model, it displays those models here. It displays that particular graph. The third one is distributions. It visualizes how data changes over time, such as the weights of a neural network. In this TensorBoard dashboard, we use a tf.summary.histogram. It shows some high level stats on a distribution. So as we can see here, it shows how the distribution is there over the time. The next one is histograms. This is also similar to distribution, but it displays how the distribution of some tensor in your tensor flow graph has changed over time. So it is basically a fancier version of distribution where the information is displayed in 3D. So in histograms, the information is played in 3D, whereas in distribution, the information is played in 2D. Again, this one also visualizes the data recorded via tf.summary.histogram. So we've already seen there is a summary object we have, summary class. It has a lot of methods which we are seeing over here. The next view or dashboard is images. So as the name suggests, it visualizes the image data and this shows the PNGs or the image files that were shared via tf.summary.image. So here the rows, they correspond to the labels and the columns to the run. The next one is audio. It visualizes audio data. It is great tool for embedding playable audio widgets for audios saved via a tf.summary.audio. Here again, the rows represent the tags, whereas the columns represent the run. This dashboard always embeds the latest audio for each tag. And the last board is text. It visualizes the text or string data. Text dashboard shows text excerpt saved via tf.summary.text includes features like hyperlinks, lists and tables. So these are all the views or dashboards what we have in TensorBoard and you can change these views or dashboards from the orange top bar or sometimes you also have it on the right navigation bar which we will see in the TensorBoard when we will do the launch and practical implementation of it.